The Mario series has a lush and vibrant history of lovable and eccentric characters, but I don't think there's ever been one as weird-looking as Yoshi. Maybe that's kind of a heated statement, but I mean, look at this guy. Don't get me wrong, I love him to bits, but he's this weird reptilian dinosaur creature who eats enemies with his tongue and turns them into eggs. And so this got me wondering, where on earth did this creature come from? And the answer I found was something I totally wasn't expecting. Allow me to share it with you. Hi there, welcome to Thomas Game Docs. So send your mind back to the mid 80s, Kyoto, Japan. And if we look inside Nintendo's development building, we'll find artists, programmers, designers, all hard at work on the next big entry in the Super Mario series, Super Mario Bros 3 for the NES. Composer Koji Kondo was off in his studio writing the now iconic melodies from the game. Designers Tezuka, Eguchi, Kono, and Tanabe, all names you might recognize if you follow this stuff, were planning out each of the levels before handing them off to the programmers to code into the game. But producer and co-director Shigeru Miyamoto, the guy who created Mario in the first place, was thinking to himself. You see, he had an idea, one he couldn't quite get out of his head. I want Mario to ride a horse. This idea of Mario riding some kind of creature had been in his mind ever since the first Mario game, but this time Miyamoto was fully resolved to bring it to life. And so he drew a picture of this horseback Mario, just a rough sketch, and hung it on the wall near to where he sat. He wanted the world to ride the back of a horse, just like he dreamt. Now, while this was going on, Super Mario Bros. 3 co-director Takashi Tezuka was watching with confusion more than anything else. He knew that Miyamoto was a fan of horses, or so he thought. And so, upon seeing Miyamoto's drawing, he mused, I think he wants Mario to ride something. Unfortunately though, this idea of Miyamoto's couldn't be brought to life. The technology of the NES just wasn't up to the task. At least, it wasn't possible for Nintendo's programmers, and they knew their onions when it came to game development. And so, Miyamoto's dream sadly never quite came to fruition. However, a few years later, Nintendo's developers started work on the next Mario game, Super Mario World. Not only that, it was to debut alongside Nintendo's exciting new console, the Super NES. Super not only in name, but also in nature. It was much, much more powerful than the plain old NES, and Nintendo were keen to show off this power to the world with this upcoming Mario game. Early on, the team decided they wanted the game to take place all in one central location, an archipelago in the middle of the ocean. As the player progresses through the game, they'll explore more and more of these ocean islands, discovering new locations, hidden worlds, and the much desired bonus rooms. Now, the name the team decided on for this archipelago was Dinosaur Land. Straight away, Takashi Tezuka had a brainwave. What if they worked Miyamoto's dream of this horseback Mario into the game? It would be perfect! And so, he instructed artist Shigafumi Hino to draw some kind of horse-based creature for Mario to ride. It had to be kind of dinosaur-y and reptilian too, to fit the whole Dinosaur Land aesthetic. And before long, Hino returned with sketch in hand. Ta-da! Wait, um, yeah, something seems a little off. This is certainly not the Yoshi that we know and love. And that's not just me. Takashi Tezuka wasn't loving it either. He thought it looked more like a crocodile than anything else. Not great. Actually, I want to quickly pause here for a second and explain where I got this sketch from. You see, it's actually from this guidebook for Super Mario World that Nintendo released in the 90s, and it's placed alongside this interview with Shigeru Miyamoto. However, Miyamoto doesn't make reference to this sketch, plus the sketch is unlabeled, it doesn't say where it's from either. And so, as a video maker, I'm assuming that this is the sketch that Hino drew. However, there is a non-zero chance that this was an older sketch drawn by Miyamoto or something. In fact, the sprite scene here is exactly the same as the sprite from the original Super Mario Bros game. 
However, the drawing perfectly matches the descriptions that Tezuka and Hino give of Hino's drawing. They said it looked like a crocodile, it was a large lizard thing, and that's exactly how this sketch looks to me. Either way, Hino returned carrying this pretty bizarre looking sketch of a lizard, dinosaur, terrifying creature that wasn't exactly what Tezuka had in mind. Luckily, Tezuka had some art skills of his own. You see, back on Super Mario Bros 3, he wasn't just the director. He also drew all of the game's art, all the visual assets, himself. It was Tezuka who decided to add eyes onto everything, and when I say everything, he wanted to add eyes onto practically every block, every cloud. Miyamoto had to step in and put an end to the madness. <laughs> anyway, point is, Tezuka knew how to draw a thing or two, and so he started sketching out a simple design which he know could use as a guide. Now, I don't think any record of this sketch still exists, trust me, I've had a good look, but I really think it's been lost to the mists of time. Either that or Nintendo are hoarding it in a cellar deep down under their HQ. Either way, this sketch proved incredibly useful to Hino, who quickly drew up some much better looking drawings and sprites. It still took a little refining though. At first, they looked pretty different. When you picture Yoshi, it ain't like this. Actually, the only true record of these early sprites comes from this blurry photo Nintendo shared a while back, so huge props to SuperBluey2749 from the Spriters resource, who painstakingly recreated them by hand. Anyway, Hino continued to fiddle with these sprites, changing small details here and there, until eventually he ended up with the Yoshi that we know and love. Or at least, almost. He needed to add some animations first. And there's one animation out of them all that has caused a bit of a stir over its lifetime. This one. Let me play that again, but slower. That's right, it's the animation that plays when Yoshi sticks out his tongue. You see, the myth was always that Mario was punching Yoshi to get him to stick out his tongue. Across playgrounds throughout the world, children were debating whether or not Mario, the tyrannical plumber, was punching poor Yoshi in the head. But the consensus the internet generally landed on was no, Mario wasn't punching Yoshi. As blog Supper Mario Broth pointed out a few years back, Yoshi starts flinching before Mario sticks out his hand. Look again, see? Plus, the game's official art shows exactly what's going on here. Mario is pointing, that's all. At least, that's what we always thought. In an interview from 2017, Shigafumi Hino had a pretty stunning revelation for us. Many people thought Mario was pointing forward and saying go, and that's why Yoshi sticks out its tongue. Actually, we did the animation with the idea that Mario is hitting Yoshi on the head, and Yoshi is sticking out its tongue in surprise. There's even a bonk sound. <laughs> but we thought people would feel sorry for Yoshi, so we decided to pass it off as Mario saying go. And with that surprisingly brutal animation added, the character of Yoshi was almost complete. The only thing left was to get him added into the game. Takashi Tezuka wanted to make sure Yoshi was approved by Nintendo as soon as possible, so he kind of forced the design through, telling the team it's related to turtles. In fact, that's why Yoshi has a shell on his back. That's right, this thing here isn't a saddle, it's actually a turtle shell, whose purpose was to make it clear that Yoshi was related to all the other turtles from the game, and therefore the character should be approved. And clearly, it worked. Yoshi did in fact make it into Super Mario World, plus he received his very own game five years later, Yoshi's Island. There's actually a lot to talk about in regard to that game, but I'll save that for some other time. Yoshi went on to become a Mario series staple, featuring in his own series of Yoshi's Island games, plus every single Mario spin-off under the sun. Tennis? Check. Golf? Check. Go-karting? Check! <laughs> and I have to say, I'm glad. I like Yoshi a lot. There's something about this little guy that's just really endearing. And that could only have come to fruition due to the constant iteration and reiteration of Tezuka and Hino. I mean, could you imagine if Yoshi still looked like this? What a dark, dark dystopia that would be. Of course, we mustn't forget Miyamoto's part in this all, either. This now ubiquitous character, this whole legacy of games and spin-offs and merchandise, it all came from a simple idea he had back in the 80s, and a rough sketch he put up on the wall. Hey, before you go, I felt I should note there's another possible influence on Yoshi. Check out this guy, Tamagom, from an old NES game called Devil World. <laughs>
It's essentially a bizarre Pac-Man clone, and the game's designer was none other than Shigeru Miyamoto. As I'm sure you've noticed, the main character, Tamagom, has a lot in common with Yoshi, and I'll be honest, I don't know how he ties into Yoshi's creation. Devil World is a game Nintendo really swept under the rug, considering it's full to the brim of religious symbols, it's called Devil World for goodness sake, plus at its core it's not much more than a Pac-Man clone. And so I really wouldn't be surprised if this Tamagom character really did bear some influence on Yoshi's creation, however if that is true, I really don't think Nintendo are likely to tell us. I think this is one mystery that will remain unsolved. Anyway, follow me on Twitter at ThomasGDox for updates on future videos, plus you can subscribe to this channel to see those videos as soon as they come out. Either way, I'll see you next week. Bye!